Welcome to the RayOb program's soaring diagram. All features shown are available to the RayOb basic program, unless otherwise indicated. Starting with applauded sounding, you can display the soaring diagram by either pressing the F7 key or by using the Displays menu to select the soaring option. Once displayed, the main menu bar becomes inactive as total control shifts to a floating control panel as seen here. The sounding diagram has also been resized to allow for data listings along the left margin. First a word about the equation section. Since this video is only about the mechanics of the soaring diagram, information about the equations are available from the help menu and Rayob user manual. Most users typically only use the air temperature input box to indicate the expected maximum surface temperature for the day. We'll start by entering an expected 33 degrees, and then click the Calculate button, and a variety of soaring information is now displayed across the screen. In fact, seven things happen. First, the thermal index, or TI, data listing is displayed along the left margin. Second, the Rayob Soaring data box is displayed in the upper right corner of the diagram. Third, a vertical red bar provides a graphical representation of the estimated lift altitude as calculated from the 33 degree maximum temperature. This lift altitude is listed in the Soaring data box. Fourth, the sounding profile color changes to dark brown to make other graphics more clearly stand out. Fifth, a red line representing the dry adiabatic lapse rate, or DALR, is drawn as a function of the 33 degree expected maximum surface temperature. It follows the dry adiabat from the surface upward until it intersects the sounding profile. The temperature differences between the dry DALR line and the brown surface profile are listed under the TI, or thermal index, column along the left margin where the zero value indicates where the two lines meet. Sixth, the area shaded in light yellow represents the boundary layer energy region, which is listed in the soaring data box above. And that leaves number seven, the blue line of the trigger DALR. Note that while the red line of the 33 degree maximum surface temperature works its way up the dry adiabat to where it meets the sounding, the blue line works its way down the dry adiabat from the trigger height to the surface. The trigger height is user specified and is entered in this input box, and where it is also reflected in the soaring data box here, along with its corresponding surface temperature of 29.7 degrees. And this finally brings us to the trigger temperature data listing here. This column represents trigger temperatures for each height listed. In fact, you can see that the 1000 meter trigger height entered by the user is reflected in the trigger temperature listing here. And the same 29.7 degree trigger temperature is the same temperature listed in the soaring data box. Just one final word about the trigger height value. The trigger height is only used for two purposes. First, it uses the dry adiabatic lapse rate to determine a surface trigger temperature as seen by this blue line. Second, the associated trigger temperature is used as input to the soaring index lift value, as seen here. And that is why there are marked with asterisks here and here. Now let's go back to the soaring control panel and look at the dew point input box. While the dew point is harder to estimate than the air temperature, it can have significant results, especially in high moisture conditions. All the lift estimates in the soaring data box are a function of dry thermals only, except for one, the CCL base lift as seen here. So let's assume the dew point decreases as the afternoon temperature heats up and we'll enter 11 degrees and click calculate. Notice now we have a new blue-green line which represents a modified dew point profile where Raya progressively decreases the dew point difference through the same layer identified by the red line of the max temp DALR. Lastly, we'll cover two more command boxes, while the rest are self-evident. First is the CCL, or convective condensation level button, 
When activated, it plots a dot at the CCL location along with a CCL label. Next and last function to demonstrate is the clouds button. This is the only sewing diagram function that requires an optional program module. In this case, it's the optional analytic module. When activated, it displays a column of simple graphic representations of the estimated cloud layers with a gray color. It also prints the cloud types such as AC for Alto Cumulus and AS for Alto Stratus. In this case, Rayab detects four cloud layers, where cloud coverage is indicated by horizontal width of the gray bars from left to right. For example, the bottom bar represents few clouds, while the next higher bar represents a scattered layer, and the topmost bar indicates a broken cloud layer. If a gray bar extends all the way across the column, it would then be an overcast layer. There are just two final notes about configuration settings, one for temperature and one for all others. The temperature setting affects these two input boxes, the diagram x-axis scale, and the display data boxes. To change these units, just open the diagram option like this, then select the pressure and temperature tab, and then make your units choice here. All the others, like height and lift units, are also changed through the diagram options panels where you first need to select the analysis tab and then select your preference from these units options like this. That completes the soaring diagram video. Thank you for watching.